Welcome back to Grade 8 Geography, Unit Number 1, Global Settlement Patterns and Sustainability. This is Lesson Number 3, What Influences Where People Build Settlements. Before we begin today's lesson, let's consider the following. What things do you think encouraged people to build the communities we live in today? You're going to put the video on pause so that you can write down your response to this question, and we'll talk about it at the start of tomorrow's class. So I'll put the video on pause right now. All right, let's get started. There are two groups of factors that influence settlement patterns. The first group is known as natural factors. These include the availability of good farmland, climate, fresh water, vegetation, and landforms. The second group, human factors, includes religious, economic, political, and historical reasons for settling in a particular area. The physical environment has a strong influence on where people live. 90% of the world's population lives on just 10% of the world's total land area. This is because much of Earth's surface cannot support large populations. Places with arable land attract large numbers of settlers. These areas have rich soil and a climate suitable for agriculture. Places that have natural resources, such as forests and uh, minerals, also attract settlements. People also tend to settle in areas that are close to large bodies of water. Waterways have historically been used for transportation routes. They are also important for trade between settlements and for providing access to food and drinking water. People may also choose to live in an area for reasons such as historical influence, political influence, and religious influence. In grade 7 history, we saw that the First Nations lived in scattered, semi-permanent settlements for centuries. Population density in North America did not rise until Europeans colonized and settled there. European colonization forced the First Nations to move to new settlements based on land treaties made with the Europeans. Another example of historical influence on settlement is Australia. The first European settlements in Australia were on the coast. Sydney and Perth have continued to expand from these original colonial settlements. Government decisions can greatly influence the growth of settlements. For example, a government decision to build a railway can lead to linear settlements growing along the route. In 1956, the Brazilian government wanted to develop the interior of the country. The government decided to move the capital to the middle of the country and created a new city. Brasilia replaced Rio de Janeiro as the capital in 1960. Today, Brasilia's population is growing faster than Rio de Janeiro. Political conflict can also influence settlement patterns. Political refugees are migrants who leave their country because they fear that they will be harmed for their political beliefs. The movement of refugees leads to the creation of refugee settlements in other countries. If a government goes to war, settlement growth in that country will decrease. Some settlements have grown around places with spiritual significance. The city of Jerusalem in Israel has holy places for Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Other major religious centers include Mecca, Vatican City, and Kathmandu. People sometimes migrate from the home countries in search of religious freedom. They settle in countries where they are free to practice their religion. A region's economic conditions can also impact population growth and settlement. The greater the economic growth in the country, the faster settlements grow. Brasilia's population has been growing faster because of the development of mining, 
forestry, and agricultural industries. More people are moving to Brasilia because of the job opportunities there. However, some settlements that develop around economic opportunities can close down and become abandoned. A gold rush is a prime example of this. During a gold rush, the population will grow very quickly. However, when gold is no longer to be found, most or all of the population will move out of the region. In fact, we talked about that during our exploration of the gold rush in the Klondike or in the Yukon region. There was a huge population influx in Dawson City, but once all the gold quote unquote ran out, population dwindled. Sometimes unsustainable use of resources will also affect the settlement's economic future. Leith Harbor, located on an island in the Atlantic Ocean, was the world's largest whaling station during the period 1909 to 1965. The whaling station housed over 500 workers. As the global whale population began to decline due to overfishing, countries began to outlaw whaling. Leith Harbor was abandoned in 1965 and is now off limits to tourists due to high levels of toxic materials in the buildings where the workers used to live. All right, so to close up today's video, I'm going to read this question, or rather questions, which you are going to write your responses to. Of all the factors we studied today, soil, vegetation, climate, water, history, political decisions, religion, economy, which do you think are the most influential ones? And why do you feel this way? So get your pen or pencil and paper ready to write down your responses. You will put this video on pause so that you've got the questions in front of you. If you don't feel ready to write your response to these questions. It means you need to go back and listen to this video at least two more times. And then that should be good enough for you to put the video on pause, write down your answers to these two questions. So put the video on pause right now. I look forward to hearing everybody's responses to these questions, plus the questions at the start of today's video. Uh, but for now, this concludes our video.